the fuck are you doing? Carrie, go back to the van. Carrie, months of work, your work. Five one zero five one home of the Breakfast Club. AJ Martinez, that hip hop and R&B is your main man. And easy, it's the Sunday sit down. Um, excuse my emotions. Giants just lost. You know how I be with the Giants, Joe. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you. This next gentleman sitting across from me, I was told he directed Homeland. They started. I was like, that. You can you can stop right there. You can stop right there. There's a list of other things, you've done, but Homeland, you can stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Seath Man. How you doing? How's man? everything, man? Everything's good. I'm a except the Giants yeah, losing yeah. to the Patriots. Yes, yes, yeah. we do. How have you been? I've been good. Nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. Thank um, you. first off, I'm a fan of Homeland. As am I. How, explain to me how you got hooked up into the Homeland situation. Um, you know, Homeland was a, was a show that I I I was following from the time the the pilot script came out. I, mm -hmm. I read it and loved it. Um, I didn't work on it the first two seasons and. You know, the thing is, I actually don't know when they tried to get me. Mm -hmm. I was down from the beginning. Gotcha. Um, but one of my good friends, a uh, showrunner I, I worked with named Henry Bramell, was one of the EPs on the show and had put my name in Alex Yanza's ear, who was the showrunner, to come do an episode. And unfortunately, Henry passed before I got to go work on the show. Okay. But in the third season, I started working with them, and I've been working with them ever since. Now, okay, see, uh, here comes the fandom. Um, you did the whole third season. How many episodes in the third season? Like, I want to know which episodes. I want to go back and look. Like, I'm a right, huge. Right. Carrie Matheson is absolutely out of her mind. <laughs> I need to figure out the man that put her on screen and did the. Th I need to know. I didn't do the whole third season. Okay. So I've done one episode per season since the third season. So in oh. in 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 television, what happens is you'll have a number of directors. If, if the Homeland has like 12 episodes a season, mm -hmm. so you'll have the producer director who's Leslie Gladder. You know, she'll maybe direct three or four episodes, and then they'll bring in other directors to to direct the balance. You know, gotcha. one or two a piece. So in the third season, I did the episode where uh, Quinn ended up shooting Carrie in the parking lot when. Oh, show! <laughs> I know exactly what episode. I'm a huge Homeland fan, y'all. Quinn is that's the hitman. <laughs> yeah, yes. Quinn, oh. Quinn is Black Ops. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I did that one in third season. In fourth season, I did the one where they had the prisoner exchange for the for Saul when he had gotten kidnapped. Yes, yes, on the, yes. On the um, on the tarmac, on the airport yeah, tarmac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this season, I can't talk about because I just shot it. See, I've been. <laughs> I'm excited. See, I'm, uh, let me get all right, off, off of Homeland. Let's get to some some business that maybe somebody else might care about because I'm being a fan right now. Seath Man is in the building. It's the Sunday sit down. It's your main man, M. Easy. Ballers. Yeah. Fam. Yeah. Another one. A huge fan. The Rock. <laughs> the Rock. What? My man. I, like, okay, let me ask a different, a different style of question. When you get a script, mm -hmm. how, how do you go about figuring out what you want on screen? When I get a script, I mean, the first thing, you know, and, you know, it's stating the obvious, but you read it. You just mm -hmm. read it so you know the story, right? And then for me, the next part of it is um, figuring out the locations. Some some directors read things and see images right away. Mm -hmm. For me, a lot of it is location driven. So the first thing I want to do is get into to find the space that makes sense for the scene that's written, and then once I'm there, I start imagining you know how the actors are going to move in the space and how I want to photograph it but it's it's a very literal process for me how did you get into dire directing how did I get into directing I uh I posed this question because when I was in college I took a couple directing courses mm -hmm. shout to um Andy Badish he used to be a, a teacher and a director in his own right and I I was very into it mm -hmm. and then he told me because I was one of the kids that I didn't participate much. Mm -hmm. But when I did speak, the kids were all like, oh, okay, you got a couple words to say. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you should really try radio. So Andy Baddish, it's your fault. I'm not directing in radio. <laughs> Appreciate you, thank you. Just had to let that story know. That's why I asked you, how'd you get into it? Um, when I was a senior in high school, 
I took a TV production class in my high school, okay. just really as a senior skate class. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a skate class? It's a bird class. You just fly right there, paying just attention, loading up on things. Got to, you. You know, you. elevate the GPA. And there get you out. go. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, and I really liked it. And at the and around, you know, it was the, a couple years earlier, I'd seen do the right thing, and that had put. That it that it put the bug in my system, like you gotcha. know, maybe this is something you could do and would love to do. And I took this TV production class, um, loved it, and so when I went to school, I went to school as I went to Morehouse, and I was an English major. But the whole time I was there, I was like interning at Georgia Public Television, working on different film sets and whatnot, and I was just kind of moving in that direction mm -hmm. without really saying I was moving in that gotcha. direction. And then I had a a, a sort of uncomfortable conversation with my mom one night when uh, I had just gone to this sight and sound that I'd heard about this sight and sound course they had at NYU like a mm -hmm. six week boot camp and you know it was a little bit of money and my mom was saying well do you want to go and I was like yeah but it's too much money she's like I hope you pay for it and I was like yeah but it's too much money she's like well what do you want to do and I was like eh. and she was like but what do you want to do and I was like eh. <laughs> she was like what do you want to do and finally I was like you know what I want to direct and she was like, all right, so you said you want to direct, now you have to do everything in your power to make it happen. You know what I mean? So that's how I became a director. Mom's put the battery in your back. Mom did it. You know, she gave me that push. And gotcha. I was a little timid with it, but she gave me that push. Now, what was the first film you worked on? The first film I worked Not on? Not major, whatever. With your first project, the first thing you put out, you're like, I really... Well, the first thing I directed or the first thing I worked on? First thing you worked on, okay. Let's, let's go with worked on, then we'll go direct. Okay. The first film I worked on... Damn. Ah. Oh. we we'll go back to the Rolodex. Come on now, reach. Ah. Oh. I can't remember the name of it. It was a short film directed by a guy named Aki Spicer, who was a couple years ahead of me in Morehouse. Okay. And I remember his production company was called Mad Scientist Productions. And I don't, I do not remember the name of the short, but I do know that at one point, because uh, I actually wrote about it when I applied to NYU for film school, at one point, while we were working on it, I was rigging some light hanging off the roof of a building. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Hanging off the roof of a building, rigging a light, and I was like, I must really love this shit, and you know, dope. Yeah. So now, um, here's the next thing. As a as a DJ, they have they, you got to have um, a laptop and the CDJs to practice. Mm. Like for a director, how do you practice? How do you get better at your craft? That's interesting. That's a real good question. Um, hmm. How do I practice? You know, you you practice you practice by doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I mean before I got to a place where I was working as a, a professional director, you know what I mean? I I made shorts. And of course, you know, you just can't make a short every day. They cost money and resources and time and everything like that. So, you know, while I was in film school we would do different directing exercises which were you know, you might just direct a scene, just grab a video camera and put it together. Or, or, you know, stage a scene, not necessarily film it. They're, they're different. You know, when you're directing a scene, you know, it's about the blocking, working with the actors, and, and how you're going to shoot it, you know, in, in the broadest, broadest strokes. And so you can practice those different elements of it without necessarily going, you know, full board, I'm making a film that it's going to come out. So, you know, those kind of exercises. The other thing that I would do, or one of the things I did in particular, was I started shooting a lot of stills just because I felt like it was important to sharpen my eye, you know what I mean, to, 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 to sort of develop my own visual grammar. So I would shoot a lot of stills, and I still, I, I would say that's one of the things I do, I guess, to practice when I'm not actually directing right now. Now that I'm a professional, I shoot stills constantly. Um, and, you know. Gotcha. All right, so it's the Sunday sit down. It's your main man, M. Easy. Who is the hardest actor you, you worked in? If, if you care to divulge that information, who's the hardest actor, toughest to work with, that you've worked with so far? Put him out there. Come on. I do not care to divulge that. Okay, so who is it? <laughs> so who is it? Let me see. Who is don't it? tell me you've never worked with somebody difficult before. It's Hollywood. Someone's had to be difficult. Somebody difficult. 
Was it this difficult? I've been pretty lucky, man. Friday Night Lights. Wasn't that with um? Oh no, that's the movie. Or oh, that's the TV show. Which one? Friday Night. I did the TV, TV show. show. That's not the one with James Vanderbeek, right? You know, I work with James Vanderbeek. Is he hard to? He seems like a Zach Morris. I worked with him on a enough. show called Mercy, and I'd heard he was hard to work with, but he was not. He was very cool. He was very chill. Wow. Yeah. So you you so you don't have one experience of a, of an actor that's just been complete jerk to you. Or or a jerk on set like Dan, he's real he's a real asshole. Not to me. Nah. I'm lucky that way. I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just lucky that way. <laughs> oh man. Now, is you did heroes as well? Yep. Yo. This man, listen, man. It's the, I'm a fan. Now, is this the reborn or the first one? I did the first one. Which episode? Alright, oh, I see, I, see I get to a fan mode and I get on. <laughs> I did I did I did a, an season? episode. I did the last two seasons. Okay. I, I forget what, what they got up to before they went down the first time. I did one in, in the last two seasons. One was called Cold Wars, I believe. And I honestly Oh, that was the one where Shit, I don't oh. remember having that one. And then the other one I did was called Thanksgiving. And uh, I know that one. I you know, know that, that one. one? Absolutely. Old girl cut herself mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving Day yeah, and yeah. everything like that. Um, you've got an amazing lineup here. I stopped after Homeland because I was such a fan, but now I'm seeing The Wire, Entourage, Sons of Anarchy. Fam, you, you, my host Netflix is your stuff. <laughs> it's, I, all my DVDs and Netflix is you. This is crazy. <laughs> Seath Man, it's a Sunday sit down. Um, have you ever wanted to act? Uh, nah. I, Why? Because I did enough of it in 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 Sunday school when I was a kid <laughs> to know that that was that was not my gift. You know? you. I'm not I'm not really I'm more of a behind the scenes dude. You know what I mean? I I I so you know I love the craft of acting and appreciate actors, but. I don't have that gift, you know what I mean? I don't have the, the ability to be naked in public, you know what I mean? Like, I'm... I'm just, oh, okay, see how you put that right? I'm just, that's not me. All right, now, there's been, I don't want to call it a fad, because I, I would, it seems like something I would want to continue, but in, in TV, on the TV shows now, sitcoms, have a lot of black women. Like, Olivia Pope with Scandal, mm. you got, um, what's the girl on BT? Um... Yeah. Dwayne Wade's girlfriend. What's her name? Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle She's Union. doing one. Then you got the other girl, like... Viola how, Davis. There you go. That's the one I was thinking of. Now, Tracy Ellis Ross. There you go. They're all over the place now. Yeah. What, what are your feelings on this? I mean, that's good. That's a step in the right direction. Because black women haven't get, haven't gotten that kind of press before and that look, so they're getting it now. As, an, as a director, is this something that you're hearing in the industry that they're pushing, or is it just that something that just co coincided with the time? You know, I think that... I think that people are beginning to recognize that, you know, diversity is also good for the bottom line. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, you know, there are, there, there are always people who are, are pushing that agenda just, you know, on the strength of, yo, we want to be represented and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think that, you know, the, the forward movement you're feeling, I think is because people have seen, you know what? Grey's Anatomy came out with this diverse cast and did gangbusters, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of money was made. <laughs> At the go. end of the day, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it is, it's one thing about what's, what's right, given the, the sort of demographic breakdown of the nation, and, and, and that's true and we can all get behind that, but in terms of the studios and the business getting behind it, they, I think they need to see the, that there is money to be made if they accept that agenda or push that agenda or whatever so i think that's what is happening you know everybody talks about the empire effect right now you know yeah. I mean? because empire did very well for fox you know i don't think anybody is going to necessarily green light more projects with black leads because you know hey there were there were black leads in empire it's like it's making money you know gotcha. people people react to that now um <clears throat> As, as someone that works in radio, my, myself, I listen to the radio different. I could tell when someone's really there, whether it's a recording, whether you're falling asleep on the board, whether it's tight or not. Mm -hmm. So as a director watching TV, mm -hmm. give me some things you look for that you're like, yeah, you're green. Like, you, you're brand new with this. Or, oh, they messed up there. Some continuity issues. Give me something. Um, 
Well, you know, it's a, it's it's interesting. I what I am critical of when I watch television is where it becomes coverage, rote coverage. You know what I mean? Explain. What I mean is one of the challenges in working in television has always been and remains is that television is made at a different pace than you know a a well budgeted feature film mm -hmm. I say well budgeted because I'm not speaking about independent film per se but in television you know you have eight days to shoot you know an hour long show which is not necessarily a lot of time it's enough time and it's the reality of television production schedule um, there are ways when you are faced with trying to cover a lot of material with a limited amount of time that you can sort of shoot things quickly you know what I mean and it's great to shoot things quickly but there are there are ways that you can shoot quickly that 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 are just a little rope that's just a little lazy you know what I mean people talk about one of the things that's exciting about television now everybody's excited about a lot of things that are happening in television but one of the things is that you know people used to say TV looks like TV you shoot master over over and that was it you know what I mean mm -hmm. it was like you know very basic coverage now and there there are scenes and times when that is appropriate to the story that you're telling but that's not always the case television in the last I don't know 10 years whatever however long we've been in this golden age of television has become more cinematic right oh, yes and and you know that's that's one of the things that's great and one of the things reasons why I, I pursued working in television is because I was seeing that you know the, the television wasn't just like line it up shoot it move on anymore well I didn't even know that I didn't even know the whys of that before I worked in it now that I have I understand it but anyway I guess what I'm saying is in my rambly way is that you know there are times where you can see a show fall into the sort of basic television by the numbers coverage and that's something I'm critical of because we're in a place now where you know you want your television programming the good stuff to be as cinematic as a movie you mm -hmm. know what I mean so that's something I watch for now did you have anything to do with the Entourage movie that, that's coming out? I had nothing to do with the Entourage movie. It's another one of my faves. This guy, yo, Seath Man in the building, the Sunday sit down, Shemaine Man, M. Easy. Um, give me some TV shows you watch on your downtime that you just enjoy. That I work on or that I don't that work on? That you don't on? work on. Uh, House of Cards. Dope, okay, all right, all right. Frank uh, Underwood. Frank Underwood. Uh, I, 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 I love that character. Damn, what else do I watch that I don't work on? I see that swag that I don't, because you know everything he works on, you know what I'm saying, is all hot. That's Seath, man! I got you, man. It's <laughs> my guy right here. I, um. Shit. Game of Thrones is a show that I have not watched oh God. through. Because I'm waiting until I have time to just sit and fucking digest it all, and I haven't worked on that. I've I've watched like two episodes and I'm in, Listen, but I haven't had time to just go in. If you ever, if the, I, I can't give you advice, but Game of Thrones fan, it's amazing, amazing. Everything you've done on this list, I, I can't say that I, I love it all, but Game of Thrones, amazing. Yeah, if you I get mean, a chance. No, no, I, I'm 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 carving out some time now, oh, see, so, I man, can, the so I can just sit back and enjoy that. Joke. All right, some influences you had growing up as into your directing future. Give me some of the the people you looked up to growing up, and you thought, you know what, I need Spike Lee, who just got his Oscar this Absolutely. weekend. Congrats which I'm to very, Spike. Congrats to Spike. Spike Lee was a big influence on me. Um, Have you ever met him? Yeah, okay. I was his TA my third year of film school at NYU. This guy's done it. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Actually, I, I spoke in his class a few, maybe maybe it was a month or two ago. Now, um, he had me come in and speak to his class, and that was that was a tremendous honor for me because you know he went from being one of my heroes and inspirations to being my teacher, literally my teacher, to you know now he's inviting me to come speak in his class. That was full circle. Yeah, it was it was, it was a tremendous. Um, Coppola. Lamette, um, 
Matthew Kisovich. I think I'm mispronouncing his name. Um, who else? A lot of people. And I have, I have another interesting question. Well, at least I think it's interesting. Why is Hollywood set up so... Or, or why is, I guess, the entertainment industry set up that everything's shot in, in, in the West Coast? Well, I don't know if that's true anymore, bro. To be honest. Uh -huh. I mean, like, you know, I don't... I used to... I just left. I lived in L.A. until this July. And the reason I left was because... The, re the reality for me was that I had not shot in Los Angeles since 2012, and not for lack of shooting. Um, because of all the rebates and everything, incentives that different states are offering, um, you know, you have a lot of production in Atlanta, mm. Louisiana, New York. I mean, I shoot in New York I'm so much more than I shoot in L.A. that I, it's, I mean, that... Your question is a fair one, mm -hmm. and if I was a better historical student of the <laughs> industry, I could answer it for you. But honestly, I feel like it's that's just not the case not anymore. Case. Like the 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 where people are shooting is changing very drastically right now. Mm. What's the difference between shooting a, a TV series and a major movie? I will tell you when I shoot a major movie. I mean, just just know there's got to be some differences. Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. I just haven't shot one yet. You know what I mean? Well, gotcha. that's not true. I just shot a movie, but that was a television movie. Um, in terms of what I've heard, mm. I hear you have more time. You know, but again, that's that's not necessarily true for an independent film, but for like gotcha. a, 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 a well-financed studio mm. movie. You know, whereas in television, you might shoot, you know, four or five pages a day on location and, you know, seven or eight pages on the stage maybe nine you know you don't really want to shoot nine <laughs> but you know what i mean that those are not unheard of sort of um page counts for a given day you, you you count up your page count like that's how you figure out what you're shooting gotcha. um <clears throat> in a major movie you know i hear page counts are more like two three pages a day maybe four pages a day oh you got some time to work you got more time to work gotcha. so what's on the horizon what's what's next for the guy that's got credits coming out the ears man what's what are you working on next um well the thing that the, the next big thing for me is the brakes which is uh a backdoor pilot i shot with uh vh1 it's going to come out in january january 4th we actually have our air date now it's a movie about three friends that are uh attempting to break into the business of hip-hop in new york in 1990 I, saw, I think i saw the commercial for this yeah yeah yeah. what's it called again the brakes yes i've seen that yeah yeah, yeah. I seen that. Oh man, um, who's in it? We got. I, I seen the commercial for it on VH1. I'm not gonna lie to you. Afton Williamson, David Call, Mac Wild. Mac Wild, that's the one I seen. Russell Hornsby, Evan Handler, Method Man is in it. Yes, that's DJ the Premier that's is our executive music producer. Wow. Like he did a. Uh, when when did you finish shooting that? We finished shooting June 29th, and I finished color timing it. You know, 45 minutes ago. That's why, I was, <laughs> that's why I was late. Got you, got you, got you. Um, we oh. mix next week, and you know, we air in January. We need to do a, a, a viewing party, Mister On the Phone Manager Man. Let's let's you. let's set that up, okay? Let's do a viewing party. Sounds let's good. Figure to that out. Word. It's the Sunday sit down. I'm just here trying to connect these dots, man. That's what I'm trying to do. And the next dot I'm about to create is a personal one. If you ever need uh, an extra, or just a fill in, or a dead body somewhere on the shoot. I'm the guy. Just let me know. I would love to stand in and do a little bit of that. All right. Bet. There it goes. I, I, I've already got the cosign. Let's end the interview right here. So Sunday, sit down. See the man. Tell them how they get in contact with you. The emails, the Instagrams, the Twitters, and everything else like that. Social media. Twitter is GateLife. At GateLife. Gotcha. That's me. G-A-T-E-L-I-F-E. -E. I feel like when I show my friends this one, they'll be like, yo, fam. That guy, yes, that's the guy. Yo, I'm not. Even, I don't got time. Listen, make sure you're putting the shows on, so you can see the script of it going down as I'm talking now. All the yes, as I'm talking, you should be seeing my man's list of things. Go. Anyways, Seath, man, it's a Sunday sit down. Appreciate you for coming by. I really Yo, do. Yo, I appreciate you. you, man. Thank you for having We're me. We're gonna stay in contact. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. All my right. guy. See, you. my dude. Absolutely. All right. Appreciate it.